I'll be right there. Okay, so you will be tested tomorrow. Part of your test, uh -oh. the questions are can, how well can you use a protractor? I'm going to check that you can read a protractor correctly and that you can measure angles and you can draw angles to a degree. So on number one, I'm going to focus on the odds on this, okay? One is already, in both pictures, it's already lined up correctly. They put the center at the, the vertex of the angle at the center. If you look that, I'm going to change my font just real quick. This line, this right MN right there, that went through the zero line. It went through zero. The line has to go through zero. And then because it went through this zero, we should be using the inside scale, not the outside scale. Because if I look on the outside, it says that this angle would have been 60 degrees. That's not right, right? It can't be 60. Because what type of angle is this? Okay, so because it's up to, it's 120. Yes. Okay. So make sure you're listing the measure that's reasonable, that makes sense, based on the size of your, the type of angle you have and its size. Okay. So let me get my protractor. So on number three. Let me get my protractor. Let me get down. There's two ways to line it up, and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, not that small. Because right now I, I'm not going through the zero line, you're going to have to rotate the protractor so that it is lined up through that zero line. Okay, so you can rotate it this way to go through I, or I can rotate it to go to the G. Okay, it is 110. Okay, let me fix mine. Oh, mine is zero line. Come on. There it goes. Yeah, so all you're gonna, all you're gonna do is put the 110 in the end. I did, okay, I know you are watching me do the protractor, but I'm just trying to model to help you turn your protractor. Make sure you can measure an angle using the protractors we've been using in class. So I did three, trying to do it with you. Make, look guys, I see some of y'all not lining up. Remember this center right here? That has to line up with the vertex. That's the first thing we do. We line that up and then we turn the protractor to make sure the ray, which is the bold line right here, goes through the zero line. Then we read the scale. Yes. Okay, so besides measuring an angle, you're physically going to measure an angle on your test tomorrow using the protractor. I'm going to also ask you to physically draw an angle with an angle measure given. So here, they want you to use a protractor to sketch the ray to make the angle. Sorry, let me move my protractor. Uh, the angle has to be 65 degrees. So what I do is I initially, I'm oh, sorry, rotate, please. <coughs> it's not rotating for me. Hold on. There it goes. Sorry. So what I want to do is first line up the protractor, the center with the M. Make sure the line goes to zero. Centers on the M and the line, the bold line goes to zero. Then I find 65 on the scale. Sorry. So put a little tick mark between that right there. The 65 is between 60 and 70. I don't know if you can see by but I just did a tick mark right there. And then what you're going to do, draw your ray. I'm just going to move this out the way. Draw your ray from the vertex M to the tick mark like such. Okay. And now you have the angle made. And this is my, and we just have to add the point B because this is supposed to be angle A, M, B. That angle has 65 degrees. All right, we're going to pause. Make sure you know the ways of naming the angle is either with the number in the interior or with the three points, making sure the vertex in the middle. So if you're not seeing the angle, Focus on, so the one is here in the interior, focus on the rays that make that angle. 
So I R C would be one, yes. And then I could say C R I. The key to this is the R, the vertex here, has to be in the middle, the middle letter. Okay. I, this most likely will be a multiple choice to ask a question. You'll be given the picture. You have to read it off the diagram. Now, on number eight, it says use a straight edge to draw ray AR. Let me get my straight edge. So, mine's up here. I'm just going to get a ruler. You can use a protractor. I'm just, I think it works better on this, on this side. So, we're going to draw. See the let me. It's not going to let me pick it. There it goes. We want to line up the A to the R, like such. And I'm just going to slide that up. Come on, guys. Use your straight edge, your protractor, to line up from A to R. You have to physically do this. You're not spectating way too much. Come on. Okay, so we drew our line, but now it says you're going to create adjacent angles. Sometimes color coding might help you see the angle better. Like, I see the angle from ray, so ray here to here. So the adjacent angles are angles with the same vertex. Our vertex is A and the same shared side. Okay, there's our shared side. The side is always a ray. So this would be angle F. A R. Yes, someone got it. Okay, so a J. So this angle, so this angle, so this angle would be R A Y. Or you can say, if you want to use point B, you can say R A B. Yeah, far ray. Okay. Oh my God, ray. Okay. My God, it's far. Oh, it's also ray. All right. Now, on the next section. Next section. Keyword is bisects. I'm gonna just underline it. Bisects. What does bisect mean? It's making new angles. What about those new angles? They are adjacent. What else? Gotta understand what they're the same. So you're gonna have two congruent angles. Know that the bisects means the ray cuts the angle in half, so that means you're going to have two congruent parts. So, so you are going to do one just with mental math or computation. This angle was given to us 26. The ray that's bisecting the angle JLN is the ray in the middle here. So that means on the other side of the ray, the angle is going to have the same measure. So you can just write 26. So they gave us JLM, that was the given 26. MLN, that's the adjacent, it is also 26. Then this is the whole angle from, so you would have to add them together and get 52, yes. That's all we're doing. Do we understand this section? Okay. Now, on the next section, now we are naming the angle pair. This is where that will might help you, okay? So I'm 15, and I'm just going to mark it so we can know to focus on the right, the correct angles. Angle 2 is this obtuse angle there. 2 and angle 3. 2 and 3, okay? Are a blank blank. What would they be called? Yep, they are a linear pair. So they are blank. If they're a linear pair, they are what? They are adjacent, but what's their relationship? What is it called when they're 180? Yeah, so they are supplementary. Okay. So linear pairs are supplementary. Okay, does that make sense? So like on 16, they now want you to focus on angles one and three. What would you call those angles? Vertical. Vertical. Yep. So one is blank to three. Yep, one is congruent. I'm just going to put the symbol. One is congruent to angle three. 
So you got to be able to identify the pair off the diagram and its relationship. Okay. Now from that, knowing the pair in the relationship, I want you to use the relationship to find the angle measure. So number 17 kind of goes with 15 and 16 because we're going to find the measure of each number angle. What is given here? The 42. So we should automatically know. Two is 42. Yep, 2 is 42. Do our vertical first. And then to get to 3 or 1, subtract, yeah, 180 from the 42. That is 138. So 1 is vertical to 3, so it would also be 138. Are we okay on this? Understanding vertical and then subtract from 180 for supplementary? All right, then if you look at 19, the key word here, XZ is an angle bisector. So this segment is bisecting the whole angle. To show a bisector, we usually put arcs to show the two congruent angles. They give us right here the measure of angle AXB to be 23. So I'm going to put 23 in the end here which means the adjacent part is also 23, so that's the AXC. What would BXC be? Yeah, 46, which is adding. Okay, so we're going to go from measures. I'm going to talk about 20 real quick, just to make sure we're on the right track. What's given here on 20 is they tell us that the angle J2K to L. Did y'all see that's the whole angle there? <coughs> that is 70 degrees. So here, now that we have x's, okay, we're going to have to write equations first to x plus what? Yeah, 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 the 31. Okay, so let me write that down. So we have x plus 31 plus the 4x plus 9 equals 70. Or some people just jump to say, oh, that's 5x like plus 40 equals 70. Yeah, combine the like terms. Was someone at the door? Yeah. Oh, okay. Minus 40 on both sides? Yep, minus the 40 on both sides. Minus 40, minus 40. So my 5x equals 30, which means our x is what? X is 6. Okay. But they want us to find the angle. MKL. So 6 plus 31 is 38. 6 plus 31 is 38. Okay. Wait, 37? 30. Sorry. 37. All right. But MKL, guys. M to K to L. They want this one. 33. It should be 33. Yes. Okay. This one was 33. So the remaining sections, okay, so we go to the last page here. The first part here is just can, and the pictures are going to look like this. So I'm going to have A and B to represent the angle. Okay, so name the relationship with angle A. You're going to tell either complementary, linear pair, vertical, adjacent, or supplementary. There's five types, right? All that apply. Okay, so this one, yes, could be adjacent. I'm going to abbreviate that. Adjacent angles. What, what else could it be? Yep, it could be complementary as well. What indicates that? This box. That box of symbol for 90 degrees. Complementary means they have a, a sum of 90. Okay. Which one? No, it can't be linear because I'm not including this angle over here. I'm only looking at A and B. Okay. All right. So if you look at 23, there's only one type there. Vertical. That's it. Yep. They're across from each other, intersecting lines. So this is vertical. Okay. If you were doing 24, because B is this angle here, and A is this. No. Oh, I mean, oh. Oh, which one? 
No, it's not. Because look, uh, this is 180, that line, right? That takes up all three angles. We're only looking at one, two, just these two, not the third one. So these would only be what? Adjacent. They're only adjacent. Okay? Only adjacent. So now you're going from your A and B, naming them, to now finding the missing angle. So on 25 here, I would use this line. All lines have a straight angle, right? They're all sum of 180. Does that make sense? So that has to be 110, yes. How would you do 26? It's 90 minus 40. Yeah, 90 minus the 48. 42. Yeah, 42. And then 27. Yeah, they're congruent. Vertical, so it's automatic 50. Because they're vertical. If you see vertical, they're congruent. All right, so on the la next page, last page here, this is what I'm saying. Now we're going to. Name and apply algebraically. 28, these answers can vary, but we're looking at these three lines, N, L, and M. They want to know which angle is supplement to angle A. What does supplement mean? Equals 180. Equals 180. So I could use line M here, see, because that's part of that angle A. And then the supplement, if I'm looking at line M, who's the supplement? Uh, On the same line with 8. Oh. It would be the 7, yeah. So I could say angle 7, or if I'm going to focus on line N with 8, okay, it would be 6, okay? Or I can say angle 6. So it just depends on which line you're looking at. All right, answers can vary. Now, looking at this one, angle two is with line L and M. Angle two is up here. Which angle is congruent to angle two? Yep, angle three, because they are, they are vertical. Okay. Now, I'm going to circle 29, because this is the algebraic aspect of it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It says here, you're going to find the values of x and y, but first write the equation to solve for x. So in order to focus on the x, like if I'm looking at 13x plus 88, that is this obtuse angle right there. This is referring to that part of the angle. The 10x, because I just focused on just the x, this is the acute one. It is kind of cute. It's a cute one right here, okay? Those two angles are adjacent and on this line. So what special pair are they? They're a linear pair. So what is their sum? 180. So that helps me set up my equation because now I'm adding the 13x plus 88 plus the 10x plus 46 equals 180. Combine the like terms. So that's 23 X's and 134 equals 180. So, yeah, subtract the th 134. We get 23 X equals 46. Divide that by 23 which is now just half of 46. So x equals 2. Okay? So that's our x. Now that we have the x, plug it back in. Okay? Plug it back into the expression. Because I know these two are vertical from each other. So that's 13 times 2. Yeah, so it's 26 plus 88. Yeah. Isn't that 114? Yep. 
Yeah. So this is 114. Z is going to be 114 because it's vertical to that. Okay. All right. Now, look at 31. You will have one where you have to label the given information. So I'm just going to start with the A right here. It says A, E, G is 75. A to E to G. This whole angle here, 75. Make your arc on the outside, lay what's 75. They now tell us also angle 1 is 25 minus X. So inside here where angle 1 is, I'm putting 25 minus X in the end here. And they give us that angle two, 4, 5X plus 20. So I'm just going to write that 5X plus 20 in the interior, like such. All right, so now we need to write an equation to solve for x, so that's what they want us to find. Huh? We don't need angle 3. We just need to focus on 1 and 4. What type of angles are 1 and 4? Yeah, we have adjacent angles. Oops, sorry. Whenever we have adjacent angles, this is we do part plus part. Yeah, equals the whole. Yeah, so we four x plus forty five equals seventy five. I just added my x's, added my numbers, right? Yeah, subtract the 45. This is going to be a decimal answer when we're done. Because we're going to get 4x equals 30. And then you have to divide that by 4. Yep. Yeah, so the x is just... X's can be decimals, can be real numbers, integers, okay? Uh, on 32, just want to recap. Y'all remember what this upside down T means? Uh, and what does that mean? Intersect. Yeah, a special type of intersection. Intersect. 90 degrees, guys. Perpendicular lines intersect forming 90 degrees. So that means I could put a box right here to show 90, to show perpendicular. And then they're telling us that DBE, from D to B to E, this angle inside of here is the 2x minus 1. And CBE, C to BE, the angle inside there is 5x minus 42. So if I know I have 90 on this side, right, then these two angles also would be a sum of 90. Are we okay there? Okay, so then you're just adding these up, right? You're doing the 2x minus 1 plus the 5x minus 42. Keep going. Equals one. Yep. Now, on 33... The keyword is bisects here, QS bisects. Now, I do want to talk about this one because a lot of people miss this one because they saw the bisects. Remember, bisects means you're going to have two congruent angles. 90. They're complementary. Um, they have, and then they have PQR. If I trace that PQR, that represented the 82, the whole angle. So I, I want to just kind of label this one because we had people set this one up a little bit. They they had the right idea of bisects, but they set up the equation wrong. What are you going to have to do on this one? Because remember, it's two congruent angles. Yes, you have to remember, do two parentheses 10x plus 1 equals 82. 
Okay, you have to remember to do two parentheses. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then the last page, guys, is just more algebra. Okay, I know they don't give you pictures for all of them, but use your keywords. So, like on 35, supplementary. What does supplementary mean? 180. So, angle one plus angle two is going to equal 180. And that will help you set it up. Okay? That will help you set up the equation. Tomorrow's the test, right? Tomorrow's the test, yeah. I will post a partial key and some flashcards to help you study. On teams. On teams, okay? Just check teams. I'll send a reminder to check teams.